Lesson 1, Introduction to the ISM Code. In this lesson, you will understand the basic elements of the ISM Code. Understand the statutory basis of the ISM Code. Learn the objectives of the ISM Code and those expected of each company and understand the function and purpose of a safety management system. With the International Maritime Organization's establishment of the International Safety Management ISM Code, those of us in the marine transportation industry, whether on board or in the office, must all recognize that safety is no longer optional. The ISM code is now Chapter 9 of SOLAS regulations entitled Management for the Safe Operation of Ships. The adoption of the ISM code was the result of an agreement by IMO member nations that in addition to the immediate cause, almost every ship accident also had an underlying and preventable cause. It was concluded that even though the master is responsible for the safety of the ship and its crew, the overall responsibility for the safe operation of the ship lies with the person or organization who operates the ship. The logic behind establishment of the ISM code is that decisions made by the operating company are just as important as those of the ship staff. Every action taken by the company at every level within the company must be made basis and awareness of the consequences that may directly affect the ship. International regulations established under the ISM code mandate that every ship and every company must have a safety management system. The safety management system will be established by a set of guiding manuals which have been examined by a recognized organization and approved on behalf of the flag administration. Flag approval is conferred through issuance of a document of compliance for each company and a safety management certificate for each vessel that demonstrates conformance with the company's safety management system. Verification audits are carried out by a recognized classification society on behalf of the flag administration. It is the flag administration who must satisfy itself that the vessels flying its flag are in compliance with the ISM code. Under the ISM code, the company is the owner or other organization such as a third party manager who has assumed responsibility for the operation of the ship that must fulfill the requirements of the code. Most donors recognize the commercial importance of a safety management system in demonstrating to the world market that they are not affiliated with substandard ships or substandard operators. Substandard ships may be defined as ships which are operated below the requirements of mandatory rules and regulations. And in that definition, we are not only thinking about the condition of the hull, the machinery and the equipment, but also operational procedures. 
that uh, the correct operational procedures are followed by those on board, that the training is carried out according to the requirements of mandatory rules and regulations. Um, we could also say that related to the competence and qualification of the crew, if these are not properly maintained, that uh, constitutes substandard. In essence, a safety management system is a quality assurance process focusing on safe ship operation through standard operating procedures, safe ship condition through planned maintenance, and enhanced emergency preparedness through effective planning, training, and drills. Working within a safety management system may be frustrating to those who are not keen on paperwork. Incorporation of safety measures with extensive documentation requirements does mean more paperwork. It must be understood, however, that it is the documentation requirement that ensures the safety measures are in fact carried out. It is a matter of planning what you do doing what you plan, and recording the process. Although everyone can contribute to safety, a safety management system requires a commitment from the top. This means that managers must motivate staff and crew to ensure the system is functional. I think the answer to that lies if we, in looking at the objectives of the ISM code, the overall objectives, and these are safety at sea, prevention of human injury and loss of life, avoidance of damage to the environment, particularly the marine environment, and also to property. If these objectives are met, then of course seafarers will gain from a safer working environment, sailing on well-maintained ships, having the confidence and team spirit to handle emergencies should they occur, being provided with proper operational procedures for safe operations of all critical shipboard operations, better communications with the shore-based organization, and also that leading to better support from the shore-based organization. Receiving the necessary training to perform their duties in a proper and correct way. And with proper training for emergency duties, having the confidence and competence to be able to deal with emergencies should they occur. In all of these ways, the crew members will gain from the ISM code implementation. Everyone will face both internal company auditors and external classification society auditors. The verification audit will consist of on-the-spot interviews, examination of records, and observation of the ship or office going about its normal day-to-day -day business. Be prepared to provide the auditors with training files, permits, maintenance records, and similar documentation as required by the company's safety management system. When specific documentation is not available, the auditor may feel there is evidence of a nonconformance. When a procedure does not conform with the instructions contained in the safety management system, a nonconformity note or report is issued. The nonconformity note will identify the specific nonconformance and provide a timeline for corrective action. A nonconformity may be defined as a situation, observed situation, where objective end evidence indicates the non-fulfillment of specified requirements. Uh, when we carry out audits 
Uh, we use this definition to identify sporadic failures in the safety management system. The purpose of doing this is to enable the company within, for instance, a time frame of, say, three months, to come up with corrective actions to the safety management system to make sure that this kind of non-conformity does not recur. An example of this type of non-conformity would be, for instance, recently expired pyrotechnics and lifeboat provisions. Uh, what we're trying to say here is that the safety management system should have made sure that the pyrotechnics and the lifeboat rations were kept up to date without it being detected by the auditor. Nonconformities are categorized in accordance with the seriousness of the problem. A major nonconformity indicates a serious threat to personnel, ship safety, or the environment and may have to be corrected before the ship is allowed to sail. Although procedures vary among different organizations, nonconformity notes are usually considered closed when corrective measures have been implemented and the action taken is indicated on or attached to the form and verified by the signature of the master or company representative. Although corrective measures must be effected within a specified time frame, the action taken is always checked during the next audit. The company will be required to provide a written response to each class issued nonconformity. The reply is entered in the society's computer so that an audit trail is established and the need for corrective action does not remain outstanding. The vessel should maintain copies of all related correspondence in the ship's file. Although perhaps difficult to perceive as such, a nonconformity is, in essence, an opportunity to improve both operation and safety. Improving safety is the primary function of the ISM code, and safety is important to everyone. Our jobs, our families, and our very lives depend upon it.